Hi, I'm Caitlin and this is Book Chats and today's Top 5 Wednesday is Top 5 Buzzwords. Top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey from Ginger Reads Lainey. I'll put a link to her channel below as well as a link to the Goodreads group where you can totally join us or find a list of other Top 5 Wednesdayers. This week we're talking about Top 5 Buzzwords. So these are words that kind of publishing companies use to tell you what books are about in shorthand and get you interested in them. And these are the five that like actually kind of work on me. A lot of like general buzzwords don't necessarily work on me because I'm obsessed with like reading more about books before I decide to read them. But there are certain things that just I'm like Whoa, when I hear it and it definitely makes me more interested in a book and want to learn more about it if not like immediately decide to read it. Buzzword number five is kind of a new thing and it's something that I wish were a buzzword more than it actually is because I like seriously want to read all of these. The buzzword might be like poetic. But um, the, the actual thing is I want to read all the young adult books written by poets. Specifically, let me amend that, all the prose young adult books written by poets, all the young adult prose novels written by poets. I am not really interested in like the, the verse books. Anyway, I read a couple last year and they were just so beautiful and I was like, wow. I just love reading this beyond the plot just for how beautiful their use of English is and so I want to read more and there's one coming out this year called A Study in Charlotte that I'm pretty excited about and that author gave me another recommendation for one so if you know of any young adult novels written by poets I want young adult novels specifically because they're less pretentious than adult novels. <laughs> Let me know below and I will totally check them out. So buzzword number four is award-winning. I don't love all award-winning books and I don't love all award nominees and I was doing a project where I was trying to read all the Newberries but then I realized it wasn't bringing me joy anymore so I stopped. I definitely do perk up when I hear something has been nominated for or won an award. It definitely brings it to my attention more easily and specifically I was reading a lot of the Morris Award finalists recently and I liked several of them. Morris Award is an award for young adult debuts. Buzzword number three is actually a comp, which is Friday Night Lights. I'm specifically referring to the TV show and maybe the movie, not the book. Nobody is really comping the book when they say something is like Friday Night Lights. Let's be real. I love the television show Friday Night Lights. I still need to go back and finish the fifth season. Shh. But I just like, oh, I don't want it to be over. Oh. I love it a lot. I love it even more now that I've lived in Texas a couple times and I just even when I know that it might not be the same and that that, that show has special magic, I really want to read books that are comp to it and especially because I read a book this past year just in December called First and Then which was comped as Friday Night Lights meets Pride and Prejudice and guys it was Friday Night Lights meets Pride and Prejudice and I loved it and I was so happy and I just could not stop smiling. You'll hear about it later on my channel if you haven't heard about it already on my channel. Word number two kind of has caveats in that I really distrust when a publishing company uses this but if a friend tells me here Caitlin read this book because it's these words, I'm like all on that. And it's because it's really hard to pull off in a way that I enjoy and when it's not pulled off well, it's just like ugh. And that is like a mind bender or like a kind of strategic book. I love these. I eat them up. I love the Winner's Curse trilogy. I love the Thief series by Megan Whalen Turner. I love The Westing Game, which is a classic example. I love books that trick you, that twist you, that just have this thing that comes out of nowhere, but not really out of nowhere, because when you reread the book, you're like, oh my gosh, how did I not see this coming? There's so many clues. I don't really trust it unless my friends say that it's got this, because my friends, I think, have a better idea of what I like to read and what I will or will not be fooled by or surprised by. And my number one is actually one that I just kind of realized really is a theme running through a lot of the books I read and that's retelling. So I read a lot of retellings. I read a lot of fairy tale retellings. I read a lot of fairy tales as a child so I think it's like me accessing my childhood but in a more adult way. I'm obsessed with retellings of Hamlet in whatever format. If it's a retelling it really perked my interest. Even The Sacred Lives of Minnow Bly which is a book that I read last year that I really enjoyed and is part of my why I want to read young adult prose novels written by poets. I didn't read it because that of that, that's actually the first book that I read that I was like, oh, this is beautiful. I read it because I heard good things about it and it was a de debut, but also because I heard that it was a retelling of this obscure fairy tale I'd never heard of and I was like, what? Retelling of an obscure fairy tale? I'm there.
what buzzwords do you guys find like that you're attracted to or interested in? What kind of perks your interest in a book? Or like when your friends are recommending something, what do they say to get you to really be interested in it? Please let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching and stay tuned on this channel for another announcement later today because today happens to be my one year booktube anniversary. Yay! And thank you so much for watching, whether you're a new or old subscriber, whether you subscribe or not. I am so grateful that you took the time to watch my channel. Talk to you later. Bye.